All right, I think we're in. Amazing. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Uh, I can't believe it. We are well and truly into February. We're nearly at the end of February. And I'm so excited to be bringing this incredible session to you all about summer camps. Now, uh, inside of the inner circle, we've been talking about summer camps. So what's the end of November, beginning of December, making sure that our members who are ready to press go on their marketing campaigns in January. Um, but what we wanted to do is to share some insights with all of you today about how you can have incredible, uh, an incredible summer, awesome summer camps that people want to come to. Because that's the thing. That's the thing we hear all the time is we've got summer programming, but people aren't showing up. People aren't pre-registering. People don't want the themes that we've got. How do we decide what the schedule looks like, what we do? Um, and so I've got some incredible uh, team members from DSOA that are joining us today. Uh, and the three of us are going to help you put together an incredible summer camp uh, offering for your students. And so um, I do want to introduce our special guest today. Before we do, if I haven't met you before, hello, my name is Clint Salter. I'm the founder and CEO of DSOA, the Dance Studio Owners Association, where we work with about 35,000 dance studio owners globally to help them grow their studio. Now, uh, I have some friends joining us, as I said. Uh, first up, Lisa DeMeo. She is our program manager here at DSOA for our Inner Circle uh, program. Lisa, welcome. I would love for you to share uh, just a little bit about you with our friends that are joining us today. Thank you, Clint. So hi, everyone. Uh, as Clint said, my name is Lisa DeMeo. Um, I grew up in the dance studio world and then spent 20 years as a professional in the industry um, before joining forces with Clint in the DSOA as the Inner Circle Program Manager. And inside the Inner Circle, what we're doing every day is working with over 750 members who own dance studios to help them dive into the pillars of their business like marketing, leadership, finance, all of those things, really diving in and understanding them so that they can grow their studio and make informed decisions, as well as we provide them with resources and systems to build into their studio so that as they build their team and their studios grow, they have a team that can support that growth for them and essentially get their time back and spend time on the weekends with their children or with their families doing what they want to do so that they are not slaves to their business and they continue to love what they're doing and bring that love to their community for years to come. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. Excited to have you here. We also have Olivia Mokeda, who is our Director of Strategic Initiatives here at DSOA and DSP. Um, Olivia, great to have you with us. Love to hear a little bit about you before we jump in and get started. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am a dance industry person. I've been in this industry since birth. My mom was my dance teacher growing up. I went to classes with her every day. And also my grandparents uh, actually started a yoga studio the year I was born. So this is like my love. This is my passion. This is my industry. And it's led me here to be the director of strategic initiatives. I oversee all the educational content for the DSOA and for Dance Studio Pro. And it's just been such an exciting journey. So for those of you who don't know about Dance Studio Pro, it's actually one of the leading dance studio management softwares out there. We actually hit over 5,000 uh, customers a few weeks ago, which was super, super exciting. And it's just a testament to what an incredible software it is. You can do your registration on there, your tuition, your payments, recital planning. It really is a one-stop shop for your business. And so um, it's been a wonderful journey to get here. Amazing. Thanks, Olivia. Um, all right, guys, we are going to jump in and help you build an incredible uh, summer offering. Lisa, I want to start with you because the big question is, where do studio owners, where should they start when it comes to planning their summer camp? Yes. So uh, the, the place you need to start, first of all, is really understanding your market. Um, you need to sort of survey your customers to find out what do they need from you in your summer programming? Uh, does your market have a lot of double income households where both parents are working and they need a full day camp for their kids? Uh, does your market usually have a parent that stays home and maybe they're only looking for a half day option so that they could get some grocery shopping done or some household chores throughout the day when uh, 
you know, school is not in session in the summer. So really surveying your customers, knowing what their needs are so that you can prepare your camps and plan your camps around those needs. Um, and then you also want to look at what were the enrollment rates last summer if you've done summer camps in the past? Uh, was there a particular age group? theme or dance style that really knocked it out of the park? Uh, and why? Why did it attract so much attention? Um, which camps maybe weren't as full as you had hoped in understanding the why there too. Uh, in our market, I know that July, we had a lot of our students would take the month of July to travel. Uh, so we saw our enrollment die down in the month of July. And so that really informed where we placed our camps uh, every year to continue keeping enrollment high. And in the end, a lot less legwork for us trying to move students around. So understanding your market is first and foremost, the most important thing. Uh, and then, you know, really getting to know what they're going to need from you. And so I'm going to kick it over to Olivia to talk a little bit about um, how you can get this information within your studio software. Absolutely. And so I, I love this data driven approach you're talking about, Lisa. It's so important to know your numbers and just understand what's happened in the past. And so if you have a uh, dance studio software, there are, I'm sure, a lot of really great reports that you can pull to get this information that Lisa's talking about. So inside of DSP specifically, because that's the software that I know, we have a report called class list by season. So if you go to your report section in DSP and search for class list by season, it's gonna give you that breakdown that Lisa's talking about. Which styles perform the best and have the most enrollments? Which age groups? Um, was there a certain theme? And so you're gonna be able to see real numbers because sometimes what we remember is not actually what happened. And so you want to see the real data, the real numbers. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, Olivia, that's great, but I've never done summer camps before. Maybe this is your first year testing the waters, trying to do camps. And so you don't have that historical data that Lisa's talking about to inform some of your decisions. So where do you go? Look at the data for your current season. OK, your enrollment numbers for your current programming that you do throughout the school year, that's going to actually inform the types of summer camps you probably should be doing. If your six to eight year old hip hop is knocking it out of the park, right? You have just full classes. You probably are gonna wanna do a camp that also targets the six to eight year old hip hop. So look at your current metrics. Those are always gonna be a good guide in case you've never done a summer camp before. Yeah, awesome guys, that's that's great. Now people, are, you touched briefly on the theme piece, but a lot of questions that we get initially is what themes are doing well? How do we, how do we come up with a theme? because summer is competitive. Like there are so many different options that parents can be putting their children into. And we, well, all of us, including myself, we want to make sure that dance is at the top of that list. It's also important for our studio owners to be filling their summer camps because they rely on that, not only that revenue, but that profit to help sustain their business during summer and get them into, into the new season. So Lisa, I want to throw it to you for you to share with us some of the themes how we start thinking about themes and start coming up with the ideas that are going to have people going, yes, I want to put little Susie into that summer camp. I want to enroll right now. Um, what can you share with us? Yes. Yeah, so I'm glad you asked this question because really it's about knowing what's hot in children's pop culture right now. Um, looking at what did Disney just release this year? What's trending on Netflix for those kids? Um, and, and just staying on top of that. I can tell you guys without a doubt, because I do have small children that are of the age, Matilda is going to be huge this summer. Uh, Netflix just released a, released a remake of Matilda. The music's fun. It's exciting. And we've been listening to it on a loop here in my house. So uh, Matilda, uh, Sing 2 is still getting a lot of action. Encanto was huge last summer. I think it's going to be huge again this summer. Um, Trolls 2 and Descendants, these are just some of the themes, just knowing what's trending within Disney, Netflix um, for those kids. And then also some more general themes that you can use that we've seen success with. Um, Pop Star Camp, Mermagic, Pirates and Princesses, and then Movie Time Magic. And within that, there's a lot more play you can do with more general themes where you can start pulling more ideas and not just sticking to, you know, the music provided in that one movie or that one TV show, but really knowing what these kids are going to get excited about. Because when mom drives by the studio and sees a poster in your window for that summer camp and the kid goes, that's Encanto, I want to do Encanto, that is really going to make that mom go, okay, what are we doing here? What's going on? When do you guys offer this? And, and dig a little deeper. 
Um, so, and then that's for the little kids, right? I would say that's three, three to nine um, or three to six. And then six to nine is more of the descendants, the more the older themes. Um, for older than that, though, if you're looking to really engage those preteens, uh, that nine and up range, TikTok camps are huge right now, as well as like genre specific camps. So um, I know we did a hip hop camp that was full every summer, every week. Um, ballet themed camps. Maybe you have a very ballet strong studio that you can like lock in those kids for that summer. Musical theater camps. Um, and like Olivia said, really paying attention to what classes are running strong during your season to inform maybe what genre specific camps you could be doing. Yeah, that's great. Guys, I think, you know, coming off what Lisa just said, what's really important is that you don't create your themes in a vacuum. So don't have you and your teacher sitting in a circle going, what shall we do? Um, and you coming up with the themes because you're not the ideal customer. So really pay attention to what Lisa said around what is it that they want, right? What do they want? Because they're going to pay for what they want. And so make sure your, your themes and what you're offering is in complete alignment with what they're after that also applies to the length of the camp as well and so you might be like well i want to do a four-week camp because i want all the revenue from four weeks but your customers probably don't want that so make sure you're paying attention to what the customers want and the timing around these camps as well we've seen some great results around short camps it might be a week long they might be half day it might be an hour a day for five days really tap into what your customers are after when when it doesn't just come to the theme but also the duration and how they want to participate in your camps as well um so we've got an awesome theme we're ready to rock and roll um the thing is you need to fill it and so mm -hmm. we always want to talk about marketing when it comes to our summer camps we did that in december with our master class around summer camps with our inner circle members and so olivia i'd love for you to just share with us some of those um, marketing tips and tricks that you share with our inner circle members when it comes to filling up our summer camps. For sure. And you it's funny, you actually touched upon it. And it's the first piece of advice I have for that is knowing your customer avatar. Knowing that customer persona is so important when we're thinking about marketing for your summer camps. So again, like Lisa said, go back to last summer and the year before and the year before that, who actually gave you money, right? That's what matters. Who put money in your hand and said, yes, sign me up or sign my children up. Who are those people and what trends are you seeing, right? Are they people who um, are working families and they want somewhere to send their children that's really fun while they're working? Are they stay at home parents who want a few hours in the day to be able to go run some errands? Are they families who have children five and under? What are the trends in the people that are specifically signing up for your camps. Because once you've determined, okay, this is my audience, all of your marketing should then be focused to that customer avatar or that customer persona. So for instance, if most of the people who come to you are working families, they're gonna look for a full day camp, right? They're gonna want a camp that's full day. And so you need to talk about that in your marketing. We offer full day camps for families who are working and busy. And maybe you also offer early drop off and late pickup, right? All of those things in your marketing are really speaking to that example of a customer avatar. So know who you're speaking to and then really let all of your marketing assets lean into that. The other thing we talk about a lot in the inner circle is what offers and incentives do you want to give your community? Um, we don't like we don't love the word discount. It's a little bit naughty. It's like a bad word a little bit in our in our inner circle family. That's okay. But we love the idea of an incentive. That's the right mind frame. That's how the coaches really position it, and it just really helps with your mindset around it. So before you even think of what incentive you're going to offer, you need to know your numbers, and that's something we really stress to our inner circle members know your numbers. If you can't afford a discount, don't do it. Okay. You need to make sure you have a profit. You need to know what your expenses are going to be, your revenue. So make sure all of that is squared away first before you even consider what incentives you're going to do. Ones that have worked really, really well for the studio owners we work with, I'm going to share two. The first one is an early bird bonus. So for instance, if you sign up between now and the end of the week, your camp is $250, for example. If you sign up after that, the month after, it's $350. Then the month after that, it's $450. So as you get closer to the camp, 
the price goes up. And that's really rewarding the people who take action early. And that's the people you want to really get on board and get to sign, you know, raise their hands and sign up. And you want to incentivize those people, people who take action early. You don't want to train your customers to only sign up when there's a deal. Right. That's not that's not a good marketing strategy. Um, so that one works really well. And then also free gifts. I love a free bonus because it's free. It seems free to your customer, but you've built it into your price and your expenses. Um, and so doing a camp theme bonus is really, really awesome. So, for instance, if you're doing like, I don't know, jungle animals theme, you can get a free stuffed animal for your child that they can bring to camp and they're going to do all these fun things with it if you sign up by a certain day. So things like that, or if you do princess camp and they get a free tutu that they can wear to camp if they sign up by a certain date, all of those things are really, really strong incentives um, that we've seen our inner circle members use and have a lot of success with. Now, like Clint mentioned, we started talking about this in December. So um, if you are joining today and you go, I haven't started we need to get you on it, right? It's okay. There's still time, but you definitely want to get on your marketing because we've already had members who are like, I'm sold out, which is incredible. And we want that for all of you. So make sure you're doing all your homework, looking at the data, creating good offers that, that work within your structure. Um, can I offer one more little piece? One more tip. I know I'm throwing a lot at you. I want you guys to have all the good stuff so you can succeed. The one other thing I recommend is making your enrollment one touch point, one touch point. Every time you go back and forth with them, asking them for a waiver, asking them for a deposit, asking them for this, every time you make them go back and forth with you, you are going to see your conversion rate drop and drop and drop. You want your enrollment to be one touch point. So all of that happens in one step. And that's why I love Dance Studio Pro because they are dance people. Their team is studio owners, studio managers, dance parents. And so they've created their enrollment system to do that very thing. People just log on on their phone. They sign up for the camp. They can do a deposit if they want to, which is really easy. I know some people don't always have you pay for the full camp right away. You have that flexibility and you have all your waivers. They click submit and that's it. So you're going to see if you use a one touch enrollment system, registration system software, your conversion rate is probably going to increase dramatically. So think about that. I know I gave you a lot, but um, just some good tidbits for you to consider as you're making your plans. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just want to touch on what Olivia mentioned around the, the, the one touch enrollment is the consumer is different. And so no longer will the consumer jump through a bunch of hoops to enroll their child in a summer camp. They want that ease. They want that frictionless process of just like pressing a button. I'm in, I've paid my deposit. I'm good to go. And so we've talked about studio software before, and all of you know how important it is to have your studio software in place at your studio to be able to allow you to focus on the things that really matter, which is your marketing strategy and picking out your themes. You don't want to be worried about taking registrations. And so Dan Studio Pro is such a great solution to ensure that you don't have to worry about all of that stuff, right? You can be like, all right, I'm focused on my theme. I'm focused on filling this thing through all of my marketing. Dan Studio Pro is going to do all of, all of that stuff for me. And as we kind of think about summer running smoothly, um, Lisa and Olivia, I'd love to ask both of you, what are some tips to have a smooth running summer? Because studio owners have been running hard all year and, and they don't want more stress. They've just come off recital. Most people are like, I need a break. Like, I don't want summer to be hard. I want it to be like smooth. I want it to be easy. And so I'd love to hear from both of you, just some tips around running a, a smooth summer period at our studio. Lisa, I'll start with you. So I'm glad you asked, Clint, because this is really about preparation. And as Olivia said, right, we we started in December. So preparation and figuring out um, how you're going to market to your clientele and, and people who are not in your studio. Uh, you want to first and foremost create a content calendar and then create the marketing assets needed to sort of follow that calendar and promote your camps. So thinking about on a calendar view, um, we're going to do an email on you know the 4th of February. We're going to do 
a newsletter blurb on you know that Saturday? Um, what is your social media post? What what when do they fall in line? Um, what are the email series? Creating the copy around that to not only tell your families, hey, we've got summer camps, but why they should be attending, right? What is the problem you're solving? I can tell you every parent is terrified that their kid is going to be sitting at home all summer staring at a small screen. So that is a great angle to let these parents know, hey, we're going to give them a place to go to be social, to be active, to be engaged, um, and then really telling them why they need to be coming to you for summer camp. Uh, and then in addition to this, you know, taking the time to gather pictures, videos, really planning on that, planning out that content so that it is engaging. Um, once you get your craft supplies, maybe you're putting a picture of, you know, the craft, the, the craft that goes with this theme or what have you. Um, so really planning it out in that much detail, how you are engaging these um, customers to follow through and register for your camps. You're going to want to start with anticipation, building up for weeks before your reg registration opens, and then continuing to promote through until your summer camps begin. Um, as long as you are registering, which you should continue registering all the time, even throughout the summer. I know one thing that worked really well for us is we had a devoted summer camp event at the studio where it was a week where all students could wear their summer swag. You know, teachers would show up in sunglasses and teach like that. We would have a photo booth with beach balls and hula hoops. And then we it gave all the little the kids a, a freezy pop at the end of their class. And it was just a fun event, very easy for us to do. But then all week long, we were sort of promoting the registration that was beginning that Friday. So really building up that anticipation to entice people and get them excited as well. Um, from there, from your marketing, you want to make sure you create a supplies list, uh, thinking through what are you going to need to make these summer camps successful? So that includes your, your crafts, your lesson plans. If you have a lead teacher, they could create a schedule by day for your teachers. As you um, know, you probably have teachers filtering in and out of these camps. So it's important for everyone to know this is exactly what we're doing every hour within our camp and having that all created so that it's a smooth, streamlined transition for all teachers. Um, and then purchase wisely. So making sure your admin take the time to shop around for crafts and supplies, get the best deal. If possible, buy in bulk to save money because you're going to use it. You're going to be doing summer camps every year. So get as much as you can, have some storage closet in the back where you keep it, but making sure that you're over prepared because um, you're going to use the, the leftover stock at some point. Uh, and then a little tip, you want to make sure you have some extra things for late joiners or children who work quickly and, you know, need something to do while other kids are finishing up or, you know, activities between between breaks. One really great thing for this is um, just in its simple is just having coloring sheets that go along with your theme. Uh, so if a student finishes up a craft 10 minutes before everybody else, they can color or just having something to fill the time for those for those, you know, those minutes that you need to. And if you're thinking about software, there, there's also some really good tips. I actually learned this from a, some of the inner circle members at the retreat, this little uh, little secret thing that they're doing that's working really, really well that I'm, I'm going to share with you. So if you're considering other software, your summer camp enrollment is a really good time and way to switch over. So I know switching software is really nerve wracking for studio owners. Your whole business lives on this software. And I know you're thinking about training your team. I know all of those pieces. And so a really smart thing that people are doing that I want to share is they're actually getting their summer enrollment set up in the new software. So like DSP, for instance, and they're continuing on their current software. So it's kind of happening like this at the same time. And that allows you to do a few things. Number one, it lets you get used to the new software without having everybody on it at once, right? Obviously your summer camp enrollment is not the same as during the year. So you're going to have a chance to kind of test it out, you know, learn, do the little learning curve that comes with new software like DSP. And so it's going to give you an opportunity to kind of have a trial run and then get everybody else ready for your fall season um, as you're switched over. So that is a super smart idea. And the other thing is, 
DSP is so affordable, you can run two softwares at once. It's a flat rate. Uh, DSP does not charge you based off of the number of students. We never want to penalize you for growing your business, right? We don't want to do that by having the, that tiered pricing structure. So um, it's just a flat rate. And so a lot of studio owners have said, I can actually afford to run both and phase the old one out because your pricing is just so good. So definitely think about that. It's a really smart idea. I now share, I think with like literally every studio owner, <laughs> I meet and talk to. So um, think about it if you're considering switching because uh, that's a really, really good strategy. Yeah, that's um, that's a great, that's a really good tip, Olivia. It also means that you're not trying to do all the things at once. You get to kind of like dive into your studio software, dive into then Studio Pro, get a feel for it, put your summer programming through it. And then by the time you're into your new season, you're ready to take mm -hmm. off with the, with the software. That's a, that's an yeah. awesome tip. Um, guys, I, I hope you've got some value and some tips today around your, um, your summer camps, putting them together, promoting them. Just want to rehash a couple of important things. The first thing is look at your data, right? If you're in DSP, if you're in Dance Studio Pro, all the data is there for you. Making good decisions starts with the data. What you don't want to do is make decisions based on the way that you feel and what you think might work. Um, that's always a, a, a case for disaster. And so what I want to make sure is that you've got data in front of you, you're looking at those class numbers, you're looking at those age groups, and you're really, you're really able to put together a compelling summer offering that gets people saying, I'm in. As Olivia mentioned, inside the Inner Circle, in January, we had people that had already sold out their summer camps by the end of January, because they put in our system that we shared with our IC members in December during our masterclass. They executed our marketing campaign and they filled up their classes based on what we've shared with you today, which is look at the data, get things that are compelling that they want, make sure that you market it because the worst thing is, is that people come up with great summer camps and then they send one email and they're like, why didn't my camp fill up? Well, you didn't have a marketing campaign in place to actually fill up your classes. Um, and if you're wanting to get started with DSP, I really would encourage you to take a demo. And if you want to take a demo of the software, you just need to go to dsoa.com forward slash DSP. We'll put a link in the chat for you that will allow you to book a call uh, with one of the DSP team to walk you through the software. Now, I would encourage you to do this, even if you've got a software that you're currently utilizing and you want to see all of the incredible things that DSP has been uh, integrating into their software over the last 12 months. As Olivia said, they don't penalize you from growing your business, which we love here at DSOA because we're all about helping you grow your business. Um, they are there to help empower you as the CEO of your studio to be able to focus on the things that truly matter, which is growing your business uh, you know, not you sitting there having to manually do all of the admin, all of the invoicing. Um, you want to you want to make sure you've got a great studio software like DSP to be able to do all of that for you. So it truly does give you and your office team back their time. So um, if I was you, I would jump on over dsoa.com forward slash DSP, do a trial of DSP. And like Olivia said, you can put your summer programming into DSP while you're running still your current software. And if you don't have a software, oh my goodness, what are you doing? No matter if you have 30 students or 300 or 1,000 students, you need software because it just saves you so many hours every single week. And our philosophy here at DSOA is helping you grow your studio and get back your life. And DSP allows you to do that every moment of every single day. Um, and so before we wrap up, Lisa, Olivia, anything else that you want to share as we uh, send our beautiful community off with well wishes to filling up and, and getting sold out summer camps? Lisa, I'll start with you. Uh, I just want to say, like Olivia said, if you haven't started yet, don't worry. It's not too late. Um, you can start now. You can even start by building anticipation in your content calendar with your families and start dropping social media posts, an email, set a registration date, let them know it's coming, uh, and then really start to build that up now as you put the rest of the pieces together. And utilize your team if you have a team. If you have a marketing team, have them start gathering the marketing materials for you in that content calendar. Um, if you have a lead teacher, 
teacher in place already for summer. Have them start working on, you know, those scheduling things. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be all on you to put together so quickly if you haven't started. So really think about um, how you can get this going now without overwhelming yourself, because it's really just about getting the word out and telling them registration opens this day and then making all the pieces move together forward from there. Olivia? Do the work <laughs> is, is my, is my tidbit, you know, because I, I, you know, I know we're creative people, we're dance people and you're all going to want to, I, I know Clint says this all the time, but it's true. You're going to want to hop in Canva and do the pretty stuff but you need to do the data stuff. You need to look at the numbers. You need to look at historically what's happening. If you do that, te what feels like tedious and boring work, that's where the magic happens. Not every studio owner is doing that. And if you wanna set yourself apart from the rest, you have to do the hard work, which is looking at the data, looking at the numbers and making data-driven decisions. That's gonna be a game changer for you. When you start actually looking at the numbers in your software and not what you think you remembered the numbers were, that's when you're going to actually be able to make good decisions across the board in terms of your revenue, in terms of your profit, in terms of your marketing, in terms of your enrollment. And that's where you're going to see sold out summer camps. So look at the numbers, do the hard work. That's what's going to set you apart um, from your competitors and really put you on the right path to sold out summer camps. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And if you've got any questions, the team will jump into the group where this is being live streamed and answer any questions that you have. Uh, again, before we leave, I want to encourage you, if you haven't checked out Dance Studio Pro, go and do it. Schedule your demo, dsoa.com forward slash DSP. Um, I'm wishing you all the very best for an incredible summer. I know for some of you, like, it's, it sounds so strange that we're talking about summer in February, but I want to make sure that you are the summer activity that parents are selecting, and that's why you need to get in. That's why our IC members were doing it in January because parents are already planning what camps their kids are going to go to. And so I want you to be at the top of that list. Um, I want to thank Lisa and Olivia for joining us today. I uh, hope you've received some value from this. Before we wrap up, I do want you to jump in the comments where you see this live stream and let us know what's been your biggest takeaway from our time together today. Please do that. Jump into the comments. We'll check them out after this. Let us know what's been your biggest takeaway. Thanks, Lisa and Olivia. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll see you again really soon. Take care and bye for now. Thank you. Bye, everybody.